record the, the call? Apparently, I can. I'm recording now. OK. Thank you. So welcome, everyone, to the IPFS All Hands meeting on May the 28th. Um, as far as I know, there's a public holiday in the US, which might be the reason why there are not that many people on the call. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, the first item on the agenda is, oh, if there's any further items, please put them in. Um, so I pass on to Matt to talk about the reformatting of the All Hands call. Yeah, so this is actually a proposal from me that I've discussed with a couple of people. Can someone confirm that you guys can hear me clearly? I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so this is a proposal. It's connected with this going discussion about getting this call down to 30 minutes and from an hour. Um, but it, the proposal would be schedule weeks in advance, have a set schedule presentations and format this call as being primarily a presentation with some Q&A and then announcements. So it would be basically a 15 to 20 minute presentation, a couple of minutes of discussion, and a couple of minutes of, um, of just announcements and then wrap it up. And that would let us schedule out, like maybe six to eight weeks out in advance, have a set schedule of who's presenting about what each week. So the people who wanna participate in that particular discussion or participate in the Q&A for that particular presentation can know that they should like they can put it on their calendar as like Michelle is going to be talking about UX design next week so I want to be there um, and it I think will produce higher quality discussions it will allow us to bring in more community members who don't necessarily need um, they don't necessarily have a reason to be on a, like a, a like sync call every week but they would but they are certainly part of the community and they're doing valuable work. Um, so it would also spur a broader range of discussions. Um, but it would also let us do things like schedule the moderators in advance too, so you'd know you're gonna be moderating like three weeks from now or something. Um, so that's my proposal. There's a GitHub issue there for discussion, and I wonder if anyone has, has ideas or thoughts on that that you wanna discuss verbally now rather than in a GitHub issue. It's not showing me the whole set of people. All right, All right. I, don't I don't see any, see any hands. Okay, great. So we can All right. move to this. Um, then I move on to the next item yeah. in the agenda. Well, if I, if I oh, make sorry, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't raise my hand because I was finishing typing a note. Um, <laughs> I think that is a really cool idea. I really like that proposal, Matt. Um, I think like we should try it like for maybe a couple of weeks before fully committing. The only thing I'm concerned is that because then every week becomes a super focused topic, eventually people, like if not notified carefully, and I think you are also working on it by creating a mailing list, like if people are not notified, then people just default to not uh, show up if, the topic is not interesting for them. Um, a lot of people come to this call, I believe, for the IPFS protocol. And so if we start diving deeper in other subjects, they they might prefer to, to find other venues and not the IPFS one. I, um, this, this is just like a concern. My dog have no foundations at all, uh, but, <laughs> but, but something that uh, we should test for before fully changing it. I also, I would give the counterpoint of we have not had like a deep dive discussion about Peerstar. We have not had really deep dive discussions about web browser compatibility, right? Like things that are very relevant to IPFS that people are doing a lot of work on that aren't being in depth discussion because we're not just scheduling it and say, hey, be prepared to discuss this. And if you want to be part of that discussion, show up on this week. So I think it's potentially could actually improve the relevance of these calls for people who are wanting to show up, talk about IPFS stuff but we have to test to see. Sounds good, thank you. One, one trick is I'm on vacation for the next two weeks, so here I am proposing a change that I wouldn't be around to like try implementing it for a couple of weeks, but we can figure it out offline. 
Um, so what's actionable here? Do you just want feedback on that issue that you posted around this or yep. what's the time? Yep. If, that? if you like it, give it a thumbs up on GitHub. If you have thoughts, comment on GitHub. That's all. All right. Thank you. Um, I was taking a bit of the notes as you were talking, so I thought I'd take it over for a bit. So now it's your turn again, Matt. <laughs> yeah. um, um, all right. So the next item on the agenda is the that the live stream works again. Yeah, I saw it when the recording started. So David. Yeah. So. Um... I had enabled this feature a while ago, but like for some reason, it would never appear here on this Zoom chat. But now it seems maybe like Zoom just refreshed all of their like sessions. And so we got the live streaming feature. Um, everyone that is a host should be probably uh, capable of starting the live stream. Like if we click more, like on the three dots, there should be a live on custom live stream service. And if we click that, Zoom, we'll put a red thing at the top that says live on custom live stream service. And it opens, um, well, first it opens web page chain, like it's starting it up. And then it uh, starts. Now I'm hearing myself. Wait, uh, and then like basically gives us the, the YouTube link um, where the live stream is being broadcasted on. This makes it super simple to do the recording, the live stream again, which is something that we did in the past and we stopped because the, comp the setup was super complex. I'm going to start stop the live streaming right now because we really haven't planned to live stream this specific talk. But I wanted to let everyone know because now we have this and we can bring it back if, if this is useful and perhaps attached to Matt's proposal of having actual sessions, like deep dives on IPFS topics or related, this might be even more valuable. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, so I would have a question. So is, um, is if you do the streaming, will then it, it automatically upload it afterwards? Yeah. So, so you don't need the recording anymore? Yeah, or exactly. Exactly. And so yeah, YouTube live stream, uh, so finish, I, it sounded like you, you, you finished. Go ahead. Am I, uh, I was just saying that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so YouTube uh, live streaming service as like a kind of like, it, it, you have to understand the beast. Like if you live stream stop and start, stop and start, it will kind of like glue the thing together. But if you live stream, like over the span of like multiple days, it will slice it up and, and like make separate videos. So you can always um, use the really nice URL, which is, oh no, I closed it, but it's like kind of like pfs web slash live on YouTube. And like you can point people to that. Um, and when they go to YouTube channel, they will see a new video every week that comes from that live stream. Cool. And is the URL of the live stream always the same? So it basically yeah. can point, people can just bookmark it and they can just join. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's super useful. Yeah. So after years trying to get the live stream to work, after many people have tried issues, we finally got it back. We can stream bytes to people and they can see our faces live. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so All maybe right. next week <laughs> we'll do the the first or the bringing back the live stream. Can be the yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, are there any further questions or comments on this topic? I don't see any hands. So the next agenda item is the developer developer meetings update from Matt. Okay, this is more of just an announcement. So the deadline for applying to participate in the developer meetings is today. Uh, if you don't fill the form by today, then we just can't promise that we'll have time to review your application in time to accept or decline. Uh, and so make sure to fill out that form. Uh, 
one thing that I've heard that I said is like part of why he hesitated to fill out the form is because it said uh, people who attend this meeting will leave with more responsibility than they had when they arrived. So I'm going to also declare that if you're someone who currently has a ton of responsibilities in the IPFS land, it's actually possible that you will leave with less responsibilities. Um, it's, it's, it's more... The point of these meetings is that it's people who are very actively engaged and they're committed to be following through on doing further work. Um, and so a lot of you are over committed right now. Um, you, we're not gonna give you even more. Well, some of you, I can't fully promise that you won't end up with more responsibilities. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and, and fill out the application if you wanna come. Uh, don't assume that we know that you want to come. Right, so even if you're someone who it's like, oh, it's obvious that I need to be at those meetings, I, we need you to fill out this form so that we can know that you're planning to come so that we know whether you need financial assistance to get here, all of those things. Um, so please fill it out. The link is, is on the blog and I have to, I'm talking right now so I don't, I don't have it, but if someone could paste it in the, um, in the notes. Uh, it's also posted in the most recent issue in IPFS slash IPFS uh, repo. There's a link to the blog post and the forms. Um, so, so that's the stuff about signing up. And then we will soon be inviting people to propose sessions for the event. And so that's where we're probably going to just have people propose sessions in GitHub in the IPFS slash conference repo. Um, we'll just set up a template on the issue so that when you create a new issue in that repo, it'll be already a template for proposing a session. Uh, and then we'll tag them with a, a label so you can filter and see all the sessions. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on that particular thing? If we're wanting to propose sessions, like just putting them in GitHub, does that sound workable to you as someone who would be proposing a session or voting on sessions? Makes it a bit harder to track votes. Um, but it makes it like it fits with, we already do so much in GitHub. Why incorporate a different tool? We, I think, I think we can learn from other conferences. Like there are been conferences that experimented with doing a uh, call for talks through GitHub. And like the vote system kind of works. Like you can always do thumbs up. Um, some conferences have reported that because you get a little bit more engagement because then people can like see what what's happening and so get more excited but at the same time so conferences have reported that then they see less proposals because not everyone is comfortable to like submit an abstract not have their first round of review and like just go directly into github and like have other people kind of like questioning their talk and so um i feel like we we should just like understand like how many talks we want like what are the topics like how can we guide people to propose the best sessions and also can we provide a little bit of curation before it lands on github or not or should we just like route everyone to github um and and, and yeah like we actually know very well some of people that organize conferences that try both things and, and we can just ask them and like see what they learn from it so there's already an issue uh, in in uh, one second, I'm trying to pull it up in IPFS slash conference issue number 24. Uh, and uh, if, yeah, so issue number 24 in GitHub, I'll push it in the chat, uh, is asking where should we have people propose. D David's comments actually flag for me. These are working sessions. So it's not a conference. This isn't proposing, I wanna give a talk at the conference. That will happen in November for IPFS Conf. We will have a call for, for proposals. That's a very different, larger scale thing. This is a, a pragmatic, focused working meeting among the people who are working on IPFS and Lib P2P and where people can say, I want to have a meeting with, with my, these people who I'm working with where we cover X, Y, and Z topic. So I wanna dig into the web, some aspect of the web browsers work, or I wanna talk about how we're updating the documentation. And so this would be, that would be more the nature of the proposals rather than I wanna get to talk about something. So I should write that up when we put out the call for proposals. Johnny? 
So the way we uh, do it in the rebooting web trust is that the uh, we submit abstracts beforehand, but the agenda isn't set until actually all the participants arrive. And so that way you actually get some uh, abstracts uh, proposed sessions. Um, and those people actually get a discount on the conference. So actually, rather than a thousand dollars, it's like a hundred dollars. So you can do the same motivation with the uh, financial assistance, which is that if there's actually people who have uh, submit abstracts and uh, that uh, that's content worthy, then they actually get some financial assistance to actually present their work. Uh, but then actually, once the conference starts, then actually it's, it's set for the agenda um, for the people who are actually are there. I know it's kind of hard because the deadline is today, but um, just a thought. Yeah, this we considered doing this as um, the quality of your proposals for working sessions being weighed into our consideration of whether you get accepted to attend the, the working meetings. I think there's also, again, I think there's confusion between meetings, a working meeting versus a conference. We have a big conference coming. We will probably invite people to propose like that if you if you get a session accepted then you probably get some sort of discount or you're at least guaranteed to attend those kinds of things um but then this one uh, yeah yeah the other thing as far as setting the agenda the current plan is that of the three days for the ipfs meeting it will be basically um there will be two days of pre-scheduled stuff that will already be scheduled before everyone arrives and then an unconference where people propose at the end of day two and pitch their sessions and everybody votes and we schedule on the fly. So there's room for the like, in, like, hey, we've had all of these pre-planned discussions and now we've kicked out these things we want to work on. Um, but uh, but I, I want to have everyone arrive knowing what's going to be covered in the first day or so um, so that we can have a predictable schedule. And also, yeah, compromise. It's, it's also very hard to multi-track meetings about IPFS and libp 2 p because so many things overlap. And so we need to know in advance what sessions are going to be happening so that we can try to multi-track. Um, uh, because doing that, I've, I've now had numerous experiences of trying to like figure out parallel tracks on the fly, and it's just too hard. Um, you need like a couple days to get your head around it and shuffle things around. Yeah, we'll put out that proposal. If people have suggestions of where we should, oh, I'll figure it out. I was going to ask if people have ideas about where we should post the call for proposals. Let me know. But All right. Are there any further questions? No. Then move, let's move on to the next item is why the move to Google Docs? I guess that we should have attended more of the meetings, but uh, let's ask, let, let him ask his question. Uh, yeah, I definitely wasn't here the last three. Um, and so it was a surprise for me. And I, I don't want to like open the, the bike shed right now. Like um, I noticed after that there is an issue describing like that we should update the scripts to use Google Docs. Um, and so if there is an issue where like, or, or a specific point where it is decided why to move to Google Docs um, versus ACPAV, I, I'm more than happy to read and like shut myself off right now. Uh, I just, since I started talking, I just want to remind my, and everyone like, like we always use a lot of tools that enable people to, um, let's say not use siloed services. So like in the beginning we'd use Etherpad. It was an open source alternative for taking notes. Uh, then we moved to CryptPad for privacy. Like um, we tried with ACMD uh, because of like UX, but like other meetings are still using CryptPad. And, and, and moving to Google Docs kind of like feels that we are forgetting those objectives that we had in the beginning. And so uh, I just wanted to make sure that everyone had considered that or if Google or if Google Docs is just like so much better than everything else that um, we have to move. All right, um, Matt wants to say something. Yeah, I mean, as the person who for the past like year has had to at the last minute make the markdown document, it it's just I definitely would oppose switching away from Google Docs without having a viable working alternative load efficiently like there are just 
the practical things to sing up the call that we're not working with Cryptpad and we're not working with Hackpad and whereas Google Docs just works. And so I'd be fine if someone wants Then you were cutting out, man. Week and it was wasting people's time. You were There's cutting out. Also, you were about um, to say something about about what people, when people, and then you were cutting out. I basically, if someone wants to step up and be responsible for making sure that we actually have a preformat hack pad every week, that would be one thing. And if we had a working tool that loads efficiently can actually work for taking these notes every week that's that's then it's a viable like discussion but until we have to like have these meetings flow effectively there's also the observation of switching to google docs people engage people participate in making the notes better they are more there's more people adding things to the agenda on the fly so it, so there's a something about the ux google docs that is working where the UX of CryptPad and HackPad were not working. So we, we sh that's a, something about the user experience that needs to be addressed about the tools that we were using that are distributed in nature. And then there's also about like just the, the setup of getting these calls rolling, having a template applied, having something, having a stable link that people can go to. There was a lot that was not working about the, the configuration we had before. So I'm, I'm open to going back to the things that are not using a centralized platform, but we, we need to address the stuff that was not working first. All right. Uh, Victor? Um, there is a link uh, to an issue that was created in the PM repo about uh, Google Docs versus iPad versus Crypton and all that stuff. Um, but I, I do think it's right that people were, the tool for creating the notes was not working and people tried to resolve it with the easiest way they could find it so we can continue with the call. I, I made the Sprint Terrapper bot work with CryptFab and there was an error which stopped me from, from further deploying it after the first time. And then when I was gonna deploy it again, I saw that we were now using Google Docs so I've kind of hold off to create, to deploy it again until we are sure that we actually want to go with Cryptad because there was other points, as Matt said, that it was easier for people to collaborate and Cryptad was slower to load. Um, so in the end, I think if we can resolve which platform to work, we should try to make the bot fit with that again. All right. Um, I have a comment that um, what, so last week I was taking the notes and getting the notes from Google Docs into Markdown for GitHub because we, we archive the, the meeting notes on GitHub. It's pretty painful. Like, but yeah. So, so for me, it would take in less time to set up a hackpad rather than afterwards converting the Google Docs into Markdown. Um, just saying that, um, yeah. But I think we should probably uh, discuss it on an issue and just see, um, because like, I think, so I also, one more comment, um, would it make sense to, because what we do for the JS dev meetups is we have just a single issue, which we always uh, post comments on, um, where the meetings are, where the hackpad is and, and the Zoom link. Because this way you could write a script that is basically scraping the issue and you have a permanent link to the hackpad because it just takes the, the hackpad of the latest comment. But if you always create new issues, you can't automate it because you don't know what the issue will end up with. So just, but anyway, it gets too technical. I guess we should um, discuss it on an issue. But I, I guess I wanna say I'm happy to help out to get this working on hack uh, or cryptpad again. All right, um, uh, so any further comments on this topic? Mm, no. So, oh, uh, that's all. So it's now the last chance if you have an engine item, raise your hand or put it in the Google Docs. 
There's demos. Check the demo section. Oh, there's a, oh, it's going down. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so there's a, so there's demos. So we've done with the agenda. There's demos now. So I hand over to Diogo for the files exchange example. Hey guys, uh, let me share my screen. Bear with me, it's the first time I'm doing this. But for those of you who uh, can you guys hear me? We can hear you all. We hear some noise in the background, but it's... Sorry, office noise. I can't control that. Just give me one second. Oops, <laughs> well. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's handled. So, for those of you who's been on the Lisbon Hack Week, this is nothing new, so feel free to leave. <laughs> yeah. so let me check. You guys can see my screen, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah? Again. Okay. So, this is an example, an existing example, but I've, I've supercharged it using PubSub. And now it's, it works like a mini Dropbox using IPFS on its foundation. So, uh, for example, I, I already have my application running. I can just go to a workspace, for example, hey, hey, whatever. Now, it, this is the, the mini application. You have our node ID, our addresses. Here, uh, we have our connected peers. You can put a multi-address here and connect to it if it doesn't show on the list. You can add, for example, a file through a Go IPFS node and paste the multi-hash here and fetch, and it will be added here in the in the files table. You can too. Uh, just let me open another tab. As you can see, there are two tabs. The set, they are the two of them on the Hey Hey workspace. So every file you upload to one of these tabs gets uh, synced to the other. For example, this readme I'm appending here, and uh, through PubSub it will be synced hopefully here. Sometimes it's a, it's a bit slow, so that right there. Sometimes it's slow. I don't know why. It's maybe. It has to sync and find the peers. For example, if I put a, a, a larger file, you can see the progress uploading to IPFS. And it's here. This is a, it's not a big file, but it's a bit slow syncing here, but it will be synced. Uh, you can too open a new tab in the same workspace, and um, all the files that were uploaded will be synchronized too. But I, I'm not going to. It's I'm put for between 15 seconds, so it's a bit slow. The, from 15 in 15 seconds, every node uh, sends the file list to, to every other node so they can synchronize them. As you can see, I've uploaded this, but he's, it still hasn't been synchronized because it's a, it's not a, it's a, a, a larger file, so that's, it's synchronized right now. So that's basically it. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there any questions? Any questions? No questions. Nope. All right. Okay. Could we could we get a link to where? Can you post in the notes a link to where people can play with? This? Yeah, sure. This this is an open PR. I'm just waiting for it to get merged. I think it's on the right track, but I'll I'll put it in the links. I think there's a there's a question. I don't know in the chat. Maybe. There's three questions. I think. Um, cool. Okay. I think it's very hard, Dimitri and me. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat? Uh, uh, I was just set, setting the order. I think it's megahertz, so Michelle, and then uh, Dimitri, and then me. Okay, that should. Okay, my name is first. Also, hi everyone who doesn't know me. It's Michelle, where I go by megahertz sometimes because there are a lot of Michelles, and I got that nickname over the years. Um, I just a quick question on what feedback you're looking for. Is there anything specifically um, you'd like to develop, and what are you looking for? <laughs> It's that that's questions for me? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's just general feedback, uh, maybe about the, the the front end, the UI. This uh, I tried to. Uh, I've searched in GitHub and found an IPFS UI kit with some components. I tried to to follow those rules, but I don't know if that's uh, if that's something right in stone or not. I just took inspiration from that and. Uh, have in mind that this is just an example. It's not to be the most beautiful thing all over the world. So, yeah. <laughs> so, on, on, if I may, um, on Michelle's uh, question, one of the goals of this example, it's a tutorial. So, like, the code is very modular. Like, you can see these panes are, are like its own little apps. And, and the reason behind that is because we had an older example, which was kind of like clunky and like very deorganized. But even so, even though it was clunky, a lot of people like started using it to hack on IPFS and like do their own demos. Like, if you search for IPFS on YouTube, you'll find demos from other people that used our example as the base. So, I think something that's very hackable, like very simple, and like it works and it does like pub sub things and like files things and like connection things, it's very useful for the community to hack on. Okay. Dimitri? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if it's going to feed into this uh, tutorial. Um, format, but I, I had the suggestion of having <coughs> some sort of indicator of how many files are being synced between the two tabs. Just a silly thing that would, just a visual indicator of how many files there are. But since this is an example and we don't want to complicate it, that might be out of scope. Uh, yeah, I have to see how I'm going to fit that. Because if the, the exchange is, is made 15 from 15 seconds. So it's not gonna be like in real time, you know? But I can work on that, yeah. All right, any further comments or questions? No, all Matt, right. Matt raised his hand. Oh, sorry, I didn't see your chat. Okay, Matt. Yeah, are you giving any thought to showing people how you might do versioning here of like just building a very, very simple versioning tree, uh, versioning history that just has a pointer to the version history and the hashes of each version? Uh, for, for the files? Yeah, so when I upload, if I upload a new file, or I guess you're just, oh. you're not for having example, any sense of updating a file once it's been uploaded. Not really. For example, I've uploaded, you can see, you can still see my screen, right? Yep. Yeah, if I, I upload this readme, if I try to upload it again, it just say the file is already in the current workspace. So it won't be uploaded again because it's already there. Uh, what if you modify it and add it? Is it going by the hash? No, no, the it, it, the no if, I, if, I'm, uh, if I modify it, it's going to be a new file. Because I'm just looking if that hash is already in my, I have an array with all the files I've uploaded, and if the hash matches any of those, it, it won't be uploaded again. So if you change the content, it will be uploaded because it will be a different file. Okay, then I, basically I'm suggesting that it would be really very, very valuable and important to have a tutorial that shows people how, to, how you could do versioning in a simple, straightforward way. Because as soon as you're doing sharing files, people are going to want versioning. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I just don't think that's the use case for this tutorial in specific. Yeah, keep it simple. That makes sense. Yeah. Great. Thank Thanks. All right. Any further questions? David, David is raising his hand. I was just going to say, um, I think what Matt is describing is the perfect use case of this tutorial, as in like grab this tutorial and add that feature, right? Like, so Matt, if you have the time to outline, like what would you like, would like to see in a versioning example? And, and I create an issue on the JSIPFS repo or even IPFS nodes, then one of us or someone other in the community can grab this example and apply that vision and like create something new that then creates that value that you're describing. Cool, and um, potentially becomes like an advanced tutorial, like a step yeah. two. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 
All right, any further questions? Okay, also not on the chat room, because every time I look in the chat room, I hate the hands are raised and the other way around, okay. All right, then there's another demo from Hugo about Ager and talking stuff. Hi guys. So let me just start my screen sharing. Okay, you guys can see my, my screen, right? Yes. Okay. So basically, this is um I already did in the Lisbon Equic about some improvements uh, I did on Azure basically focus on browser builds. So this is, this includes like improvements in Bubble, Webpack, and also Karma, and all the browser running. So what I wanted to do was basically um, make the Karma tests more efficient. So with all these improvements, now I'm able to do stuff like I'm going to demonstrate now. The basic example is basic. It's just r running it like you did, like you can do it right now, and add this experimental flag. It basically, translates to enable experimental karma, and you can just run the text like normal. Let's wait a little bit. So one new thing it's that it's running on Chrome Atlas, which makes all the bootstrapping a little bit faster. And one other thing that it's actually really valuable, it's that now you have all the source maps correctly on error. So if you click, you will jump directly to the to the error in the line you want want it to be uh, and that really will improve the workflow on people that are working on browser stuff one other one other cool thing that we can do right now it's now we can redirect stuff to the original CLI so if for instance I want to let me just remove the error if I want to tell Karma that I want to test on Chrome Atlas and Firefox Atlas, I can. So it's not hard coded in Azure, and you can redirect stuff directly to the original CLI. So you can see it's running on both. And also, if you want something less verbose, you can just say "reporters progress" and change the, the console reporter. <coughs> and it's a little bit less verbose. Also, the watch command works also very good right now. So I think this might help someone that's working on browsers and at least for me it would be really helpful because all my OKRs are browser related. So that's it. All right, we have a question from David. Sweet stuff. Um, it's going to be super helpful for all the debugging and especially <laughs> given that the previous debugging was consoling all the way. Um, I am curious if this makes it easier to like even if you are now using Chrome Headless, which is great, uh, or Firefox Headless. Um, does it make easier to have tests that we say, oh, I want to spawn three browser nodes, right? Because before we were kind of limited by Karma and like we would only run tests in one browser node. Um, but now it seems, well, from your demo that like things might get easier towards that direction. Is that correct? Like if I want to make an interesting topology, like three browsers, for example, and I connect them in a specific way, can I, can I create tests? That, uh, no, 
Oh. Uh, this is for unit testing. Mm -hmm. so what you want is more kind of integration integration tests. Yeah. Um, and actually, as I'm starting to get in, get more and more deep on my OKRs, I'm starting to think that I'm going to need some kind of some kind of that that kind of testing that you're talking about, but that will be another different, completely different to this just bundles everything together and runs it in one browser. It can go uh, concurrently in two browsers, like in Chrome, Firefox, uh, Edge, or actually Safari doesn't really work at all, but the other browsers work, but it's just Got it. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dimitri has a question. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, if IPFS DCTL would be the right place to add it. I think it might be, uh, and we've certainly use. I mean, that's in part how we use it right now. Uh, but it is a tool used outside of testing, so it might not be the place. But something to look into and consider. But it would be great to have that functionality. Thanks for bringing it up. All right, yeah, I'll definitely look into into writing some something like that. Okay, so I don't see any further questions. There are no further demos. Um, I don't see any further agenda items. And for the Q&A, I also don't see anything. So now is the last chance to raise your hand on the chat room or on the webcam. I don't see any of those. So I close the today's meeting and say goodbye to everyone and see you next week. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you.